Well, I first came across the series in the mid-1970s when I was actually studying for a degree in biology. And they weren't the paperbacks and hardbacks we know and love today. They were actually very much smaller editions, the Fontana paperbacks, which perhaps some of the older readers of the series might remember. Uh, and they were recommended books for the course, so I started collecting them, but actually didn't realise they were part of the wider series until a few years later when I saw Butterflies by E.B. Ford in a bookshop in a completely different version to the small, well-thumbed paperback that I had. So it, it was a, a slow realisation that the, the series was connected with these paperbacks I was using during the course, and that's where my interest started. I, I didn't really know many of the early authors, but I actually worked for one of them, Max Nicholson. Today we're standing here in the London Wetlands Centre, but in the early 1980s I actually worked for Max Nicholson on a site next to Terra Bridge, the very first urban nature site in Britain, uh, the William Curtis Ecological Park. And uh, I worked with Max for a few years. He was a very inspirational mentor for me in terms of natural history. It's probably one of the reasons why I'm now writing new naturalist books. I didn't realise at the time that he was the author of Birds and Men in the series. I think it was published in 1951. And if I'd have known, I'd have probably rushed out and got a second-hand copy and got him to sign it, uh, as people seem to do these days. But um, yes, Max was very inspirational and he was really the main author I knew. Do you know, I've never counted up the number of new naturalists I own and sit on my bookshelves at home. I haven't got a full series by any means, but I've actually bought them as I've needed them. So originally they've started out as working books, a uh, reference set for me, and I've accumulated as I've gone on through my career. When I was actually in London in the early 1980s, I actually bought uh, London's Natural History by Fitter. Uh, when I worked on the coast, I bought the, the seashore and other volumes. So it, it's been a bit of an intermittent um, purchasing policy. It's only in this last few years that I've been able to sort of fill in the gaps in the series. In terms of the one I like best, it's very actually very difficult to uh, pick one, but I'd probably pick Mountains and Moorlands by Pearsall, uh, one of the early volumes that really got me interested in the Highlands and Islands and uh, generated quite a few trips north. 